Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to support the channel, and like and subscribe for more Determination next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Bruno Bucarati from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Not Bruno from Encanto. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Let's start out with our goals for this build. First, we need to XYZM, meaning examine your zipper, man. That's actually all the goals, so let's break it up into the funky things you can do with a zipper. Step one, ouching people by unzipping parts of their body. That sounds pretty horrible. Next, we need to unzip ourselves to avoid attacks, either by dodging or by stopping our hearts to be untraceable by a fisherman. Finally, we'll unzip walls, which should make the dungeon part of Dungeons & Dragons pretty easy. But you know what's not easy? Finding the time it takes to eat healthy. That's where today's sponsor, Factor, comes in. Factor is a meal delivery service that sends you prepared, ready-to-eat meals that are never frozen, so they're still packed with flavor. There are over 34 options of chef-inspired foods, and you can get them whatever your dietary needs are. Personally, I like Calorie Smart. I got a lot of weddings coming up this summer, and I want to make sure I am looking fit. Calorie Smart helps me do that with a bunch of meals that are under 550 calories, like... Creamy Parmesan chicken with tomatoes and broccoli. Spicy Poblano beef bowl with roasted broccoli rice. How about a shredded chicken taco bowl with roasted corn salsa? But Calorie Smart isn't the only option. They also have Protein Plus with a bunch of meals with over 30 grams of protein per serving. They got keto options. They got vegan and veggie plus options. Whatever your dietary needs, Factor will have you covered with something tasty to eat. Best part is all these meals are ready to eat in two minutes. You don't have to go to the grocery store, spend a bunch of time in the kitchen meal prepping. We're busy this summer. Who has time to go to the grocery store? Just get Factor. And Factor even has a special deal for 2Lock subscribers. If you head to factor75.com and enter offer code 2Lock50 at checkout, you'll get 50% off your first Factor box. So what are you waiting for? Skip the takeout, skip the meal prep, just get Factor and enjoy eating healthier this summer. Now, back to the video. For stats, we'll use the standard point buy. Bruno is an anime protagonist, so he can't really be bad at anything. I know Giorno is the Jojo this season, but Bruno is the main character. So 14s in strength, constitution, and charisma. 10s in everything else. We can't be bad at anything, so no negative modifiers. Charisma will help you lead the team. Constitution will give you that determinazione, and strength will let you punch good. Bruno is a human, but he kind of dies and also has alien stand stuff in him, so he should be three different races. We'll go custom lineage, so whatever you think he should be? You're right. I think the ultimate version of this show would be a Blue's Clues style thing, where I just look into the camera and say, what do you think the character would be? And nod, like Steve from Blue's Clues. Take Inspiring Leader for your feet, letting you give a rousing 10 minute speech that gives up to six creatures temporary HP equal to your total level plus your charisma modifier to help them get through the day or not die when horrible stands do horrible things to them. Bump your constitution with your two free points for determination and grab perception for your skill of choice and grab persuasion or intimidation from your background. It doesn't really matter where you get the skills from really since your starting class is gonna give you any skills you need. Starting class is a bar. You need a weird spell list because your powers are zipper and you're basically flawless in terms of skill checks. Bard is the place to be. Grab acrobatics, investigation, and insight for your skills of choice. You get any three you want. It's pretty nice. You get bardic inspiration as well, letting you inspire your allies to add a d6 to their attack roll, skill check, or saving throw, making your crew a little bit better than the other crews. For your cantrips, mending lets you zip two pieces of something back together or fix a crack in something. Mage hand lets you move objects with a floating spectral hand. It's supposed to be something you conjure, but maybe you just unzip your wrist and Send your hand 30 feet away. For first level spells, Heroism gives a creature immunity to fear and temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier every round. Bruno has so much a determination, it feels like he could fight beyond the natural limits of HP. Long Strider gives you 10 feet more of movement speed so you can run faster. Bruno's just in pretty good shape, so you can run fast. Featherfall prevents up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage as a reaction. Sometimes the best escape is falling down a tower, a lot. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and the types of magic causing them. Look out for Chronomancy. It is the most 
most powerful form of magic. Second level bards get Jack of All Trades, the ultimate anime protagonist ability, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any ability check you're not proficient with. Every check you roll now gets a plus one. That's what I call a determination. You also get a Song of Rest, letting your allies recover an additional d6 on short rests. I could see the crew grooving out to some rolling stones. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, letting you add double your proficiency bonus to two skills of your choice. Persuasion and Perception would be my picks, helping you lead the team and assess enemy abilities. Mirror Image creates three illusory duplicates of yourself that enemies can hit instead of you. When someone makes an attack against you, roll a d20. When you have three duplicates, they hit one on a six or higher, eight or higher on a two, or 11 or higher on a one. There isn't really a way to do unzipping your arm to make someone miss. This is almost that. Maybe we could just become a lore bard and use cutting words, letting you subtract your bardic inspiration die from an enemy's attack roll, damage roll, or ability check. Presumably the cutting words are supposed to be an insult, but maybe your words are cutting your arm off with a zipper to force a miss. You also get three more skills like athletic sleight of hand and history, kind of nerfs jack of all trades by making you better, so it is still better, even though it makes one of your abilities worse. Fourth level bards get an ability score improvement. Bump your charisma for more inspiration die and better inspiring speeches to inspire your team. To inspire your team even more, enhance ability lets you give a creature advantage on ability checks of a certain type. If you choose strength, their carrying capacity is doubled. Choose dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose constitution, they get 2d6 temporary HP. However you want to inspire them, the buffs last for one hour depending on your concentration. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, making your inspiration die recover on short rests instead of long rests. They also bump up to a d8. You also learn third level spells and it's time we get a little weirder. Fame Death lets you make a creature seem really dead. They have no pulse. Magic will detect them as dead. Even a beach boy wouldn't be able to tell. Wouldn't that be nice? Six level lore bards get magical secrets. Two spells from any list, letting us finally unzip someone. Inflict Wounds is a melee spell attack that deals 3d10 necrotic damage. Since it's a first level spell, you can upcast it to add another d10 of damage. I would imagine it is not pleasant to be unzipped. Shield adds five to your AC as a reaction, giving you more defensive zipping options. Seven level bards get fourth level spells giving us our first offensive stand option phantasmal killer obviously we're getting more later if you want to do those earlier at home that's all good we've just got a few stands at this point so when building a stand user i want to focus on the unique elements of the stand before getting the punch ghost part anyway phantasmal killer forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature failing that they're pursued by a ghostly creature in their mind and will take 4d10 psychic damage until they pass the save it's kind of a stretch but i'm just getting what i can on the way to opening up a wall a level bard's getting another ability score improvement keep working on that charisma since you're mostly a support character at the moment good leadership is all about delegation ideally your crew should have just as many episodes focusing on them as there are episodes focusing on you for this level spell freedom of movement makes you immune to being slowed down or restrained and you can break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement bruno never gets the cuffs put on him but uh, come on that's like the easiest thing in the world for zipper man to handle nine level bards can learn fifth level spells skill empowerment gives a creature expertise in skills they're already proficient with for an hour letting you pick one of the other skills to be an expert at with some more flexibility. It would be easier to just have two more permanently with expertise though. Thankfully, 10th level bards get expertise in two more skills. We'll go for insight and investigation, giving you superhuman observation skills, even if you can't invest those stats as much as I'd like. Probably don't lick your fellow character's sweat to see if they're lying though. That's uh, kind of creepy. You also get two more magical secrets like pass wall, which opens up a passage through a wall. It's a fifth level spell that normally is only on the wizard list, but making Bruno a wizard would just feel a little weird but also stop us from getting inflict wounds which i think is the best unzipping spell you can also add some damage to your inflict wounds if you grab the hex spell letting you pick a creature to deal an extra d6 of necrotic damage to with all of your attacks spell attacks and weapon attacks so let's get better weapon attacks jumping over to fighter you can choose a fighting style like unarmed fighting letting you deal 1d8 damage with your unarmed attacks or 1d6 if you only got one free hand you can also deal a d4 of damage to a creature you have grappled once per round but if you're using hex for your concentration spell now all all those punches also unzip the person a little bit for a d6 of extra damage. Second win lets you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level in HP as a bonus action once per short rest for another form of determin determination determination of I don't speak Italian, why is that in the script? Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. That means two punches in a turn. 
That's not a lot. Try Inflict Wounds in a Punch. That's a little better. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and Echo Knight will give you a stand with the ability to manifest Echo. That gives you a spectral version of yourself. You can move within 30 feet of you and make attacks for you. Once per attack action, you can unleash Incarnation to make one more attack from the Echo space as well. An amount of times per long rest equal to your constitution modifier. With Action Surge, you can make two attack actions in a turn, so that's up to four attacks right now. Much better, especially if you're using Hex to unzip people. Four level fighters get another ability score improvement. Now we're going to start working on that strength to make those punches hit a little bit harder and a bit more often. Fifth level fighters also can make their punches hit more often with extra attack, letting you attack twice with your action, four times with an action surge, and up to six times total with unleashed incarnations. So with a first level hex zipper, that's 6d6 necrotic damage in a single round, plus all the punching. Six level fighters get another ability score improvement, push your strength up higher now. We've actually started punching. Punching should probably be a priority. Seventh level Echo Knights can make an Echo Avatar, sending your stand to do some scouting up ahead for 10 minutes, up to a thousand feet away, which isn't totally accurate. Zipper Man is a close range stand. There's just something very Bruno I want further into fighter. So, you know, maybe unzip your head and have it walk away. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Cap off your strength to make sure all of your punches will land with premier precision. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. That's what I wanted. Pure, unfiltered determination. Our capstone is the 10th level of Echo Knight for Shadow Martyr, letting you use your reaction to protect a creature with your Echo within 30 feet of you. That attack is now made against the Echo, and you can't use it again until you finish a short rest. This ability, not the Echo. This is also probably the best way to unzip yourself, since it would be a zipper man protecting you, technically. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a great support player with Inspiration Die and a free 24 temporary HP for all of your friends to start the day. You also can pump out some serious zipper damage with an action surge combo, two incarnations and hex all pairing together for 68 plus 66 plus 30 damage in a single combo or around 72 with median rolls. Finally, you're loaded up with skills, a minimum of plus three to every skill check, proficiency with nine skills and expertise in four skills to solve things before fights start, plus skill enhancement and enhance ability if you just need to supercharge something. For weaknesses, you're a bit mad missing out on a capped charisma since we needed constitution for determination and strength for hitting. A lot of your spells are also very situational. Feign Death and Passwall are really important for Bruno's kit, but you'll probably only use each of them less than a handful of times. Finally, you're really dependent on necrotic damage and physical damage, which can be very commonly resisted. Thankfully, you're a great leader. So if you can't handle someone's stand, just get a team member to handle it. Delegate, zip, and stand up for what you believe in. Just watch out for villains who can outlast you. Running out of time could be an issue. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making new videos all the time here. Join the Patreon to support the channel and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.